I don't think I can believe in humanity anymore. Not after what I've seen. You know, in school and in the movies, you learn about history and the awful things that people can do to one another. Holocausts and genocides, what have you. And they'll shock you. But there's a distance between events like that and yourself, your life. You never think for a second living here that anything that terrifying, that vicious, can be done by your neighbor or your buddy's son or your minister. You know your community. You know what the town's like and you know these people. And then this occurs. You just step back and think. Jesus Christ, who could have done this? You're saying a member of my community can do something like this? And at that point, you begin to ask yourself bigger questions. You think about your faith in God and man. How can man do this to his own kind? And how can God allow it? I don't know how to answer that. I feel helpless now. I feel that the acts of evil in this world overpower the good and, and that nowhere is safe anymore. When we got the call from Officer Joyce about it, and he described it as brutal, well, you have to understand that Officer Joyce is the type to exaggerate what he sees. In this case, though, words weren't enough. They didn't do justice to what happened. We, um, my partner, Detective Rosario, and I, uh, we got called out to the woods around 2 in the afternoon. The spot was about a half a day's hike in from the road, this road that's typically viewed as a scenic route. And considering our town's place, you know, already out in the boondocks, this road wasn't taken by many. We walked through the field and along this path, this dirt path that hasn't been used for a decade. Rosario and I walk along there, and we finally find it. It's this gated fence. I'll never forget it. I, I look down and I see this kid, just a kid, shirtless and tied to the fence with, with his hands zip tied. I stopped. I, I, I couldn't move at that point. I felt my insides shaking and my heart falling off a cliff. Rosario turns to me and he says, these things happen. He learned his name was James Good, a high school student. He had been there for 15 hours freezing and cold before he finally died. I looked at this kid with the deepest sadness I've ever felt. And that's when I first asked myself, who could have done this? could have done something like this. Do you still feel like you can lead this case, Mr. Rakoff? Mr. Rakoff? No. No, I don't. I need to get away from this case. <laughs> Off the record, don't you feel a compulsion to figure out who did this to that poor boy? 
Absolutely. I want to catch this man with all my soul. But I know when I find him, I'll kill him on the spot in cold blood. And then I'll be no better than him, will I? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry.